listen there are three things if you don't have you will remain perpetually poor number one value if you don't have value have relationships if you don't have relationships have character if you don't have these three things you have signed a contract with poverty forever by wisdom oh god heaven's gates open up with understanding you order the seasons creating day and night turning darkness into light arranging the stars to your pleasing by wisdom oh god heaven's gates open up with understanding you order the season listen when i realized in my life that i was bankrupt of the wisdom of god i went to the lord in tears and in prayer do not send me if you will not give me wisdom i will only waste my time and punish the destinies of millions in ignorance even if not for my sake any leader here i can tell you with all due respect i don't care the intellectual qualification you have leadership in today's world has become more spiritual than ever you will need wisdom if all you have is a piece of paper i respect it but get ready to pay a very huge price with the wickedness the prejudices and the biases that exist in our world we live in a world where the color of your skin can become the prison that keeps you today we live in a world where your tribal affiliations can become a reason for your downfall the edge for you is the wisdom of god i'm speaking to someone who has struggled I'm speaking to a man of God who was genuinely called, but is right now getting frustrated in ministry because you've done all you know to do. No money, no membership, no leadership, no influence. Yet you are genuinely called of character. The problem is the absence of wisdom. Wisdom is so superior. When it lands in your life, the results speak immediately. I hope you believe what you're hearing. The Bible says Solomon offered a thousand bond offerings. Then the Lord comes to him in 1 Kings chapter 3 and says, Solomon, now that you have done this, you have attracted my attention through your sacrifice. What do I give you? And the young boy Solomon said, God, I am a young person and you have made me a leader over all these your people. Who am I in this frailty? This is my frailty. I'm not able to lead these people. But then he says that you give me a wise and an understanding heart. And the Bible says, because you have not asked for the life of your enemies, or money, or power, or all of these things, the understanding heart indeed I will give you, but in addition, I will give you riches, wealth, and honor such as no man had had. This man woke up in the morning. If you were Solomon's roommate, you would never know that he had received something. You just say, good morning, sir. Not knowing the version of the person you slept on the same bed with is no longer the version that has woken up. Let me prophesy to someone, in the name of Jesus Christ. The weak you, the you that has not sustained the wisdom and intelligence of the spirit that came here, will never be that version of you that returns back. I pray for someone, a baptism of the spirit of wisdom. Let it rest upon you now. A baptism of the spirit of wisdom. Let it rest upon you now. Please be seated. Let me repeat myself one last time before we proceed. The proof of wisdom is the quality of the decisions that you make, which translate to the quality of your life. Decisions decide destiny, spiritual decisions, intellectual decisions, relational decisions, financial decisions, corporate and organizational decisions. The proof of wisdom is seen in the quality of decisions. So, Solomon the wise, his wisdom is about to be tested. Everybody, please let me have your attention. Solomon sits as king, and the first case that is brought to test his wisdom was the case of two women, two harlots. The Bible lets us know that those women slept, and for whatever reason, they slept on their children. I wish I had time. This is very powerful, because the children there are just beyond human beings. They speak of visions. One killed her vision by sleeping on it. And then the Bible says, while it was night, they exchanged the children. And by morning, there was all kinds of trouble. And they went and stood before 
King Solomon. Verse 17 of 1 Kings. The Bible says, the woman said, I was delivered with child and was in a house. And then when you read on verse 18, Solomon now is in a dilemma. He's standing with these women. And the other woman is saying, this one killed my child. The Bible says, Solomon said there is a solution to this. He said, bring me the sword. The moment the word of God was introduced, which is the sword of the spirit, the person who was guilty was immediately Solomon said, no, the wisdom I have received is beyond the realm of intellect. I only activate that wisdom when the word of God is in partnership with my thinking. He said, bring me the sword. The moment the sword arrives, there will be a clear separation and there will be an explanation. The woman who had the child said, no, instead of me losing my child, my vision, I love this vision so much, even if I'm not the person who takes care of it, please give it to her. And he said, that is it. Wisdom demonstrated through the truth. I don't know what I would have done if I were Solomon. Maybe I would have carried the child and told two of them to just go away. I would keep the child in the palace. You get the glory. That would be someone's song. You get the praise. You take the honor. I just want to say thank you. So in my life be glorified, be glorified in this place. Be glorified, be glorified. You got the glory, you got the praise, you take the honor. I just want to say thank you. Let not the wise man glory in his wisdom. Thank you for always visiting our channel. I believe you have been blessed by that message. Wisdom is more profitable for every man who is into business or ministry, even education. For more videos like this, do well to subscribe to this channel and also share this video with all your friends. See you in our next video. God bless you. Thank you.